for the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, which runs the Binbrook Conservation Area, and it's sort of their, it's a, it's a cash cow for them to a substantial extent. Uh, they've promoted it as the place to go fishing in Hamilton, the place to go fishing in the Hamilton Niagara area. It's a nice, clean inland lake, 435 acres or 475 acres, a reservoir established in 1970 to control the flow in the uh, Welland River and prevent flooding downstream. It looked like a really good spot. It's got swimming in it, lots of trails, uh, canoeing, boating, those kinds of things, and lots of fishing. And now they've got a problem that this thing is contaminated. Mm-hmm. This is Lake Niapenko, oh, and, oh. and it's contaminated by this PFOS contamination. It's, it's a nice little lake. For people in Binbrook, it is their recreational facility. They don't have a recreation center, but it's a really nice little spot. PFOS is a very widespread chemical. It's a flame retardant. Flame retardants were put into all sorts of materials. Baby clothing. In 2002, 3M, which was the producer of this stuff, voluntarily stopped producing it because it becoming clear that this was a problem and that it wasn't disappearing and it was it was accumulating in people and it looked like it was having some health impacts. It's now on the Stockholm Convention list of dirty dozen chemicals on a global scale. So it's prescribed, it's under ban or under restrictions on a global scale. It's a flame retardant because it's incredibly stable. It doesn't oxidize, so it doesn't break down easily. And that makes it really difficult to deal with as a pollutant. And it turns out that it not only is really hard to get out of the environment once it's in the environment, but that it does two other nasty things. It bioaccumulates and it biomagnifies. It gets into a, an organism, and the next organism up gets all of that and increases the concentration. The stuff stays in the organism. So when you eat a fish meal from Lake Niapenko, you significantly increase the body burden that you have of PFOS. And what we're now seeing, particularly in the last year or two, the studies are coming in connecting PFOS with significant health problems with breast cancer, uh, ADHD, kidney disease, and it's actually now been also connected to other, the immune system is the other one. People who, everybody has PFOS, and, uh, so it's really hard to find a, a control population that doesn't have PFOS that you can compare what's it like not to have it to what what's it like to have some of it. Uh, so the way they're doing the studies is how much do you have? What's the concentration in your body versus somebody else? Because that varies. And on the basis of that, normal levels of PFOS that would be expected to be found in most people appear to be making vaccinations no longer work. And vaccination is a pretty central part of our health system. You think about diphtheria and all the stuff that we, tetanus and things that we we get vaccinated for when we're kids. If half of that is, is not working because of the PFOS burdens, and they're in kids, they're in everybody, that's not a good situation. And if you then go out and eat a fish from there, you double or triple or quadruple the amount of PFOS you have in you, that's obviously not going to be a good thing to do. There are records of using that uh, site for fire practice in the last few years. It's not a long historical thing. It's been there since 1985. If you go to the 2004 airport master plan, they have a description of this in there and how this is an economic benefit for the airport and they intend to use that and and have other fire departments come in and make use of that because they've got this facility. And in 2005, there was a gathering of fire departments. They did a training session that was focused on that fire suppression pad and was written up in the Spectator at the time. There should have been a whole program to identify where there's a likely problem and to test it. We knew in 2002 when we st- when we put in federal regulations limiting the amount of stuff could be imported into the country. We knew in 2002 when 3M voluntarily shut down their production facilities. But in 2002, nobody went back and said, gee, you know, at the airport, we used an awful lot of that stuff. We should be able to figure out whether we did or not. And it would all be around that fire suppression pad because we did all these. I mean, they burned stuff there for years and years and years. The neighbors complained bitterly about the fires.